Our patron saint, or one of them, we have two saints now, don't we? Uh, saint John Henry Newman. He once preached, strange as it may seem, multitudes of Christians go through life with no effort to obtain a correct knowledge of themselves. Very interesting. People simply do not know who they truly are. What makes matters worse, most even don't even try to find out the true knowledge of themselves. Now why this is a problem, as St. Newman tells us, is that the great teachings of the church, the great things about our faith, like how our sins can be forgiven, how we can have new life, new birth, away from our lives of sin, cannot be understood without some sort of knowledge of the nature of sin, or in other words, without some sort of knowledge of our own heart. See, some people who are truly trying to live it right, and there might be a few of you here today, you're really trying to be a saint. It might be true, you might sin very rarely. But a whole bunch of people who think that they never sin at all, or they hardly ever sin, it's because they don't have a true knowledge of themselves. They don't see their lives in the way that they truly are. And so the thing is, is this, those are the people who won't be able to fully receive, if ever, salvation from our God, because they won't be able to realize that they are in need of being saved. It's like you're out on a lake on a rowboat and the rowboat is sinking, you don't even know it's sinking until it's too late. Well, self-knowledge then is important because we need to know if we are like the Pharisee or the tax collector in our gospel today. As our Lord Jesus tells us, one walked away from the temple justified in good standing with God, while the other one did not. Now, the one thing we have to keep in mind is that the Pharisee was not a totally bad guy. He said his prayers. He paid his tithes on the money he made. He was not greedy or dishonest or even adulterous but he wasn't praying to God. He was only talking to himself, praising himself. He was not like all the other sinners, like that tax collector sitting there in the back or standing in the back there. But on the other hand, the tax collector, he was not entirely a good guy. He just had a rough break. No, he, he was a sinner. He was a hated tax collector working for the Romans, taking money from his own Jewish people. But he did pray to God in one of the most powerful prayers any one of us could ever say. Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The tax collector was someone who knew himself and knew himself so well, he knew there was no way he was going to make it without God. The Pharisee, however, did not know himself, was blind to the pride that he had, so much so he thought he was speaking to God when in reality, he was speaking to no one but himself. So which one are we? Did you come here to Mass today basically to talk to yourself? Or are you here to say, Lord, I've messed up. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Let's go back for just a second now to the preaching and teaching of St. John Henry Newman to help us figure out the truth about ourselves. First of all, we all have hidden faults that we're sometimes not aware of, unless we lay open our lives into the penetrating but loving light of the Holy Spirit to kind of root them out, right? As Newman taught, the surest way to know that we have hidden faults that need to come to the surface is how easily we see hidden faults in others. We're always seeing what's the problem with other people, not with ourselves. We see the things that they don't see. Well, guess what they are looking at when they see you? The things that you don't see. Your faults, your shortcomings, and sometimes your sins. The example that St. John Henry Newman uses is the case of someone who's struggling with anger. The angry person almost always thinks they can control it. They can take care of their emotions. No, I got it. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. But what happens when you bring up the fact that you're, you're starting to get a little upset, you're starting to get a little bit angry? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Why are you yelling? I'm not yelling. Right? And so what happens is they don't realize that their anger is taking over because they don't realize they have an anger problem in the first place. They don't know themselves. Or in a similar way, man, it's tough, isn't it? You can't tell a person who's a know-it-all, the one who always has to be right, 
that in this particular case, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. You can't tell them that. Because if you do, they get all hurt and upset and start crying. Because even though they think they know it all, they know nothing about themselves. We simply do not see what we're supposed to see about God and especially about ourselves. So St. John Henry Newman tells us we have to be prayerful and watchful to use our prayers and our reading, especially of Holy Scripture, to help us know more about God, but to also help us to know more about ourselves. And so he gives us a few pointers to help us out. First, Newman teaches self-knowledge. It doesn't come to us as a matter of fact. That's something we just normally do day by day. Just like we have to take time to learn a language, we have to take time to learn about ourselves, but not alone because we can't do it by ourselves. We have to have God there to guide us because we can only go so deep. We need his light to go to the depths of who we are. But second, and this one's a biggie that a lot of us fall into, we tend to hope for the best for ourselves because we tend to be a little bit lazy, especially in spiritual things. And so we hope for the best. We don't have to spend time examining our lives. For example, some people hope that if I go to Mass every now and then, hopefully I'll take care of it. I'll be all right, even though we should be going to Mass all the time, okay? And so when someone points out to you, hey, how you doing, man? I haven't seen you at church in like a month or so. Get all defensive and hurt. Well, it's not like I'm murdering people. It's not like I'm robbing a bank, okay? But because you don't know yourself, you, don't, you're, you fail to realize, you know, people, they don't like to be around you anymore. In fact, you're not really getting any, any responses in your text or people are not calling you back because you're argumentative, you're selfish, and you're really not that much fun to be around. We don't want to hear that. But if we knew ourselves, we would know our tendencies and work on those things, okay? Because we hope that because, well, I'm not basically a good person, that should be enough to go to heaven, it covers up our faults. Don't get stuck in false hope. Be true to who you are, okay? Here's another thing we gotta keep in mind, and that is this. We all can change if we simply learn how we truly are with God. You don't have to be stuck, okay? Because God wants you, the true you, back with you, okay? He wants the blessed version of yourself, the one that shines with Jesus Christ, the one that dares to love and bring the truth to others. That's the one he wants to come forth. That person will attract others because God will be flowing through you. But you will never receive that blessed version of yourself. You don't ever realize something very, very important, guys, okay? That for many of you, the you that you think you are is not the you that God wants you to be. Keep that in mind. Some of you got it down, you do. But for a whole bunch of us, the you that you think you are, that's not who God wants you to be. He knows you can do better. So the next point that Newman teaches us, and he says this will shock most people, but the more guilty we are, the less we know it. Because the more often we sin, the less we are distressed about it. Man, that's so true. Like for example, if you just told one, one piece of good juicy gossip this entire year, that was it, just one time you gossiped, all right, the rest of your time your speech was fine, you were good, You'd be pretty sorry about that, even sad about that one time you messed up, you gossiped. But because you gossiped 20 times a day, in your speech, on Facebook, on Twitter, you're, you're writing stuff in the bathroom, okay? You become so numb, so unaware, you're not even the le least bit distressed, you have a problem with gossip. But then you start to wonder why nobody's ever getting a hold of you. We all need God's grace. We all need the sacraments to help us become holy. But how can we feel the need for God's help or see our great dependence on him, or even how we can see how we're nothing without him unless we know ourselves? Are we like the Pharisee or are we like the tax collector? Do we know who we are or we do not have the slightest idea? Notice something from our gospel. Both the Pharisee and the tax collector stood while they were in the temple. It's very interesting because people usually don't stand when they pray, even back then. But as St. Luke tells us, one stood and prayed, 
to himself, but the other one stood off at a distance, would not even raise his eyes to heaven. You see, the Pharisee stood to show off because he was prideful. He had very little to do with God, but everything to do with himself. The sad thing is, he didn't know himself. The tax collector stood way in the back because he did not even consider himself worthy to fully enter into the worship space of the temple. But he knew himself. One of the greatest realizations of all times that come to our senses to see ourselves fully and to admit before God and before ourselves. One of the most sincere prayers of all time. Lord, I'm far from you, man. I've drifted far away from you. I'm not close to you because I have sinned. But Lord, please be merciful to me. Because in that realization, in that knowledge of how you truly are, you will come upon a great discovery. God will hear you. He will answer you. He will give you mercy and you will leave justified. Because you will also leave knowing that God will bring out the true you. The you that can set the world on fire. The you that can bring the presence of Jesus Christ wherever you happen to go. Brand new life is waiting for you because God's mercy is waiting for you. Know yourself enough to know how much we are in need of God's mercy and then watch how your life will change.